Hi guys, it's Charlie. I hope you're all well. Um, so I'm back to do another Halloween inspired video today. And I'm doing this because the last two videos that I've just put up, um, obviously my top 10 um, horror book recommendations for Halloween and my top 10 movie recommendations have gone down really well, like better than I thought they were going to. And I know that you're probably going to get really annoyed with me keep talking about Halloween and spooky stuff and all that sort of thing. But um, I wanted to do this one because I've said in a few of my videos that I was kind of thinking um, about doing this. So this is basically um, some of the scary book covers that I own, the ones that really freak me out. Um, so I thought I would show you them. I think I've got... I've got 15, so I'm going to get straight on into it because obviously this video will be super long if I don't. So the first one is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Now this obviously isn't the movie cover. This is the original cover. I've got the movie cover as well somewhere. Um, if I just... Um, I'll just show you them in comparison. So that's some in comparison. I think they're both quite creepy. But this one has just got this raw, old, spooky edge to it, I think. Although, this one is actually missing a chapter. You can see how difference in sizes and I basically bought this one first and then this one came out and I noticed that it had more pages so I went out and bought that one as well but this one I think is creepy then the next one um, is Florence and Giles by John Harding now anything that has got eyes on, starey eyes, I get really creeped out by. And like these have got the eyes on the side as well. And I get really creeped out by these because I have to turn them round on my shelf so that I can't see the eyes. I don't know why, I just feel like the eyes, they just feel like they follow you. Um, and I've always had that this thing since um, my uncle used to have this massive picture um, of a girl some sort of artwork in his house is massive and the eyes wherever you went the eyes just used to follow you and since then, i've had a real thing about eyes on my book so yeah this is this one and this is again an old-fashioned um ghost story yeah this is an old-fashioned ghost story about a boy and a girl called florence and giles obviously um, who are um, neglected by their uncle and banned from reading and basically Florence loves to read so she sneaks off to read all the time and she like makes up her own language so that nobody can understand her and then she becomes convinced that this malevolent spirit is after her brother and so yeah it's kind of an old fashioned kind of ghost story so yeah that's the second one then the third one is Sleepless by Thomas Fahey. This one, um, I don't think is really, really creepy, but I just think the blood's coming from the eyes, and yeah, I just, I think you would look at that and be like, <gasps> a bit. So yeah, this isn't one of the most scary ones, but it's definitely, I wanted to add this in. And yeah, I showed you that one in my top 10 Halloween reads anyway. The next one is Breath by Cliff McNish. Now what I love about this, I don't know if you can see it from that far away, but there is a shadow of a person in the window and I just think it is so creepy. Uh, on the back, her face is closer. And I just think that is so creepy. And like when I first was at the book, I didn't notice there was anything there and then I was like, oh, there's, a, there's a girl in the window. Um, but yeah, this is... Um, a story about a boy who can see the spirits of the dead. Um, and there is some haunting his new home. One of them is evil and the others are these children that are good. Um, but he has to try and do something to save him and his mum before the evil ghost takes over. So yeah. Again, really spooky cover. And the next one is The Unseen by Alexandra Sokoloff. Again, the reason I went for this is because of the shadow that is coming down the stairs. And I just think, for me, as I said in my, um, my movie video, I think when a horror story or a horror film 
is set in an everyday house with everyday things, I think that becomes more scary because obviously of us all living in an average house and we use these things daily, you can use your imagination more in the real world once you've seen these films. Um, so yeah, I just, this thing walking downstairs, I just think it's a real eerie cover. Um, this is another ghost story about an abandoned mansion that drives people either mad or ends up killing them. So yeah, that's that one. Then the next one, now this book cover, I've had to put it in the other room because I, it re I know this, it sounds silly, but I don't know, just this boy's eyes. And it is Rowan the Strange by Julie Hearn. And it looks like this. And it's just his eyes, like they're, and on the side, they're just, I don't know, they've just got this really spooky, like they're looking straight through you. It's really creepy. Um, I haven't actually read this yet. I might read this for this Halloween. Um, but this, I can't really describe this one, so I'll read you the back. It's only short. It basically says, How does a doctor examine a person's brain? They won't use any knives on me, will they? Rowan knows he is strange, but dangerous. He doesn't mean to scare his sister. In his right mind, he wouldn't hurt a fly, but there's a place he can go where they say they can fix his mind. Beyond the bars on the window, England is at war. Behind them... Rowan's own battle is only just beginning. So yeah, I just think it sounds really, really good and I probably will read this this Halloween. The next one, you guys are going to get bored with this. It is Anna Dressed in Blood. I love this cover so much. I mean, you guys know how much I love this book. But I just love, like, the blood on the bottom of the prom dress and the smoke and the big house. Oh, I just And the little, like, red petals going across. Um, that look like blood. I also love about this book, I know it's not covered, but the fact that the writing, I don't know if you can see on there, is tinged with red, so it looks like it's been written in blood. Oh my god, I just think this is an amazing Halloween cover. The next one is Long Lankin by Lindsay Barraclough. Um, woods, it has woods on it. Woods, everything goes wrong in the woods. Every horror film, they're going into woods, something bad happens. So woods just freak me out. Um, I I really, really want to spend a night in a woods though. I know that sounds really peculiar when I've just said I'm scared of them. But just the atmosphere you get in the woods. And these like two little girls like right in the back there. And you can't see any further behind them. So you're kind of thinking something might be coming from there. And yeah, I just, I love this cover. And this is obviously another ghost story about two sisters who move to live with their great aunt but the last person to live with their great aunt um, in this hall disappeared and now her niece's arrival it says has reawoken the evil that has lain waiting for years a haunting voice in an empty room a strange scarred man lurking in the graveyard mysterious words scrawled on the walls of the abandoned church Cora must uncover the horrifying truth that has held Briars Gordon in its dark grip for centuries before it is too late for Mimi. So I think this sounds really, really good. The next one is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Now, obviously the front doesn't look that scary, apart from there's a little girl levitating on it. But um, I'm actually doing this for the back. Because obviously this is filled with creepy photos, this book. Um... Yeah, it's sort of like creepy photos all the way through. But the photos on the back of this book, I think, can count as a creepy cover because, yeah, they're just strange. Like, there's only one little girl standing there, but in the reflection there's two. Um, and, like, these strange little boys up here. I Yeah, I just think this had to be included in my scary covers. So, yeah. The next one really creeps me out a lot, and it is The Possession of Cassie Quinn by... Catherine Nutson. I mean, this girl just standing on the front, the way you can't see her face, um, and just in this old, like, white, almost hospital gowny nightdress. And yeah, you can't see her face, as I say. And I just think it is really creepy. So that's that one. The next one is Here by Denise Grover Swank. Now, these are kind of similar, I would say. 
And I think I kind of picked them for the same reason, just the fact that you can't see her face. She's in the woods. She's in the woods. Goes without saying, she's in the woods. Um, and also she's got the, like, white nightgown on. And, yeah, I don't like being able not to see not being able to see people's faces. I never went to see Santa Claus when I was younger because I can't be doing with not being able to see people's faces. I don't like people dressed up as things. I get freaked out. So when I can't see somebody's face, that to me is creepy. The next one is Louise Welsh and it is the girl on the stairs. Now, I think it's just because a little children like just standing there like in a lot of horror films they use a little child and I think that is really scary and the fact that it's dark down there so all you can see is this one layer of steps that she's standing on um, and she's not looking at you, she's looking away like she could just turn her head to you at any minute um, and it reminds me of a film um, Don't Look Now Don't Look Now, it reminds me of the film Don't Look Now um, which is about a little creepy girl in a red coat um, so yeah, that's that one. I didn't actually tell you what those last ones were about. Well, that, this is about a girl who is obviously possessed by something in the woods by her house. This one is about a girl who's in a car accident. She wakes up, she can't remember anything. Um, but they found this bracelet with her name on at the scene of the accident that she has never seen before. Um, and then she, this boy that's never really paid attention to her at school starts paying attention to her. And he's got this necklace on that she keeps dreaming about. Um, yeah, he knows more than he's letting on, I guess. So that's that one. This one is about um, a woman that moves with her partner to Berlin. And there's some strange things going on in the like apartment flat thing next to her. Um, and the last bit says, a scream reverberates through the walls. Suspicion starts to creep in. Ooh, spooky. Um, the next one is Bad Girls Don't Die, which I'm going to be reading after Me, Earl and the Dying Girl. Um, I was going to read Every Day by David Leverton, but I just thought it's Halloween now. I need to dedicate my time to spooky reads throughout October, and then I'll go back to that. I don't need to tell you why this one is creepy. Like, just It's got that old Victorian feel to it. And again, you can't see her face. Yeah, I just think this is a really creepy book. Um, and I cannot wait to read this. I've wanted to read this for so long. Cannot wait to finish Mia on the Dying Girl and read this. Um, and this is about a little girl whose sister is taken over by this doll, I believe, or something like that. Cannot wait to read this. There's three books in this series. You can see, whoops, you can see the other two up here. And I can't wait to read this. The next one is The Shining by Stephen King. This is the newer cover for it. And again, it's a small child. You can't see his face. The way it's all dark and then you can just see the light coming through the door. Yeah, I just think it's super creepy. Um, so that's that one. I'm not going to tell you what the Shining's about. You all know what the Shining's about. And then the last one. And this one is my number one scary cover for Halloween. This book my mum had when I was a little girl. And I remember always looking at it on the shelf and asking her to take it away because it terrified me. And she never told me what this book was. I just knew that it terrified me and then for years I've kind of forgotten about it. I never knew what the book was then I was going through on eBay looking for some Stephen King books and this cover came up and I was just like oh, that's the cover that used to freak me out and I had to get it I knew I just had to get it and it is Carrie and the Tommy Knockers and I mean just look at that you cannot tell me that it's not creepy and on the back look you cannot tell me that that is not creepy, that that does not creep you out. Like, even now I have to put it so I can't see it. God knows what's going to happen when I read it because I'm just going to have to keep hiding it every time I finish the page. I'm just going to be like, <gasps> put it away. Um, but yeah, this is my number one scary book cover. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you agree with me that these covers are really, really spooky. And I'm sorry for getting fed up with me talking about Halloween, but... I love it and I'm a little overexcited. I'm like a kid at Christmas around Halloween. So, um, yeah, look out for my first Friday Fright Nights video, which obviously will be up Friday. Otherwise, it wouldn't be Friday Fright Nights. Um, and I'll also have a book review up of uh, me and Earl and the Dying Girl pretty soon. So thank you very much um, for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.